I have a bit of a confession to make. I have this self-image of being a minimalist, but I've quite recently understood that I'm not. When I moved here, I didn't have that much stuff. But for some reason the, during these four years, I've accumulated so much crap. And today we're gonna go through it all, sort it all, and I'm gonna show you my best tips and tricks on how to declutter, basically. It's actually more like challenges to make cleaning and sorting fun. If you're new here, hi, my name is Kalle, and if you've seen my videos before, welcome back. Now we're sitting on the floor of the living room, and this one, this is what I ca call my, my random drawer. Um, it's the place where I put all the things that I don't have a specific place for. And <laughs> I would say most of my things I don't have a specific place for. We're gonna start down here first, and then we're gonna work our way up to the Overwoning upstairs and then do the bedroom where all the clothing and everything is. That's a complete mess. What is even all this? Like rolls of tape, screws, nails, uh, electrician stuff. Uh, network cable, <laughs> bird food. <laughs> I'm gonna quickly divide up this pile into a keep and don't keep. And after that, we'll go upstairs and I'll show you my challenges I talked about before on my clothing rack because that's so easy to show it on clothing compared to this pile right here. As you can see, at least half of it is stuff I'm not gonna keep. And this was a mix of like memories, receipts, and just some more practical things. I think the reason for us having such a hard time getting rid of our stuff is because we have an emotional connection to something physical. At least for me, I have, you know, different memories for every piece of clothing here. Like, this shirt I have a specific memory of from my mom's birthday or this shirt I went on a first date on or something like that. And that makes it so hard for us to actually get rid of these things. But there is a way that I have used at least that helped me to sort through these things and items without letting the emotional things take over. And I think it's extra tricky when it comes to clothing because we're living in a society right now where we are constantly pushed to buy more. We're constantly pushed to feel out of style. Um, I remember one clear memory I had from working in a store. I worked in a, what do you would call, like a sportswear store. I sold running shoes and running gear, yoga pants and stuff like that. And my job, my job back then, believe it or not, uh, was called the virtual merchandiser. And my job was to guide people through the store for, to make them buy as much as possible. Um, I was horrible at my job uh, because I didn't believe in this philosophy at all and I got fired after three months. But when I went into that line of work, I thought that we had four seasons in a year, winter, spring, summer and fall. But I very quickly realized that we have 52 seasons when it at least come to the fashion industry. Um, and I was in charge of the campaigns and I couldn't keep up. Every, like two times a week, there was a new campaign. Oh, sail over this corner. This is the new exclusive thing. And I was like, how can people keep up? I had no idea they were so like pushy in stores because I don't normally shop that much. And when I shop something, I, I go into a specific store and I know I want a t-shirt. I go in, grab a t-shirt and then out. I rarely browse for stuff like that. But as you can see, I have some things to sort through. Um, so we're gonna do that now, and I'm gonna show you my technique I've used before uh, that would have been very 
helpful actually for, to, for, uh, to me because I've been thanks to this technique I've been able to get rid of the emotional attachment to this piece of clothing and actually see it as a physical thing that I don't have a connection to and that makes it way easier to uh, either throw away or give away to someone that needs it better. This challenge is very simple but also very effective. I've used it so many times before myself. What you do is that you take your hangers, you have a clothing rack here, you take all your hangers on the clothing rack and turn them backwards if that makes sense, like hang them so the hook is facing you and put them all back. And when you've done that, when you start using your clothing again, say if I use this shirt for instance, then I take it off, take off my shirt, wear it, and then I put the hanger back again like this, and then back on the clothing rack. And say you put a few more of this this way facing me. <laughs> and after 90 days, you can also do it in 30 or 60, it's totally up to you. Um, when you look at your clothing rack after then, say 90 days, all the hangers that are still facing you, like this way, if you still ha have some hangers hooked this way, get rid of those, piece those pieces of clothing. You haven't used them in 90 days and you're not going to in the future either. It's a very simple way to actually look at it, at it quite objectively. Uh, there's no emotion emotions attached to it. You can like just look at it and see like, okay, I haven't used this in 90 days and I'm probably not gonna use it in the future. And yes, there are exceptions. Say that you're in the middle of the winter <laughs> and you're just having summer clothing up. Yeah, then the 90 days is not gonna work, but think seasonally and try to figure it out that way. So I think this is a super easy way to sort it through, get a good overview because it's no way for you to remember what you've been wearing and not been wearing. And when you're then sorting it through, it's like, oh yeah, but I really like this one. I'm, I'm probably gonna use it sometime in the future. You have said that before and I have said that before, and that's not true. So, <laughs> then you can look at the hanger and just see that, okay, I haven't used it. It's just fact. Then you have to get rid of it. Now we're gonna sort, sort this whole piece uh, together and see if I can get rid of some stuff and get some more room in my uh, dresser. That will be amazing. And then downstairs again to show you one last, not even a challenge, a game actually. See if you can beat my record in this kind of decluttering challenge. I don't know about you, but for me, clothing is such a identity thing. Um, look at, maybe this one. <laughs> we call this one a uh, Pippi Treya, like Pippi Longstocking sweater. Uh, it used to belong to my dad and I got it because he saw a greater need for me to have it. I've worn this sweater twice in two years and it's only been for thumbnails and YouTube. It's extremely itchy but it works for the style I want to have for the photos when I take, uh, take them for YouTube. But there's so many things in the past I bought when I was a bit more insecure I would say in my personality or who I wanted to be that I bought stuff like clothing when I wanted to identify as something specific, like a more outdoorsy person or more clean looking or more business oriented. I don't know about you, maybe you have the same thing, that you have a lot of clothing connected to who you want to be, but uh, who you not really am for real. I remember this one TV show, a Swedish TV show I watched a few years ago. There was this guy, also called Kalle, as I am, and he wanted to be this very outdoorsy guy. So when they went through his garage and his um, storage units and so on, they were just filled with tons of like uh, hiking backpacks and um, hiking boots, hiking gear. It was like, I'm the outdoor guy. But when he looked at so many other things, there was still so many price tags left on the items so he was like oh I don't actually hike but I think I do go on hikes because I bought so many of the clothing uh, so it's kind of funny that way again that we identify as the things we buy 
I don't know what I identify as when I see all of this. Oh, up here as well. Those I know we're gonna keep at least. I think I'm gonna do the same thing here. Do a keep pile and not keep pile. So it's easier to <laughs> divide it a bit. <laughs> I think I wore these once. I bought them actually at the, at a spa we went to like two years ago. I forgot my swimwear, uh, so I had to buy them buy them in the reception. Never gonna wear these again. There was a few things to throw away at least. Some running pants, shorts, outdoor pants, the neon horrible things. <laughs> um, my old working pants actually. And then two wind slash rain jackets that I don't use and haven't used for many years. So this is gonna go in the donation pile and this is still gonna be here, keeping them. And maybe putting them up here so I can see them a bit better I think. This one is called the 30 days minimalism game and it's invented by these two guys called Josh and Ryan from The Minimalists. And you can play this game on your own if you want to, but I would recommend you do it with a friend, a colleague or family member because it is a game and you're supposed to win. Um, and <laughs> me as a competitive person really likes to win. win. So I would recommend you do it with someone you know. Okay, so what you do is that the first of the month, now October is soon coming up, um, so the first day of the month you find one thing that you want to get rid of and that can be uh, donating, selling or throwing in the trash, it's totally up to you. One thing the first day, the second day you find two things, the third day three things and so on. And it sounds and it's gonna feel very easy in the beginning, um, but it piles up quite quickly. And a tip from me as well, um, I've actually placed like a, a basket or a, plastic bag or whatever you want to use, a bucket, near my entrance to my house or yeah, the door basically. Just to get myself a reminder every day like, oh, okay, I need to get this done. And you also need to get this item or items out of the house before midnight that day. Again, it's gonna feel very easy in the beginning, but then it ramps up. It's super fun and it's a super fast way of getting rid of a lot of stuff you're not using and having a good time at the same time. I think I made it, yeah, my record is 22 days. And that doesn't sound like that much, like 22 days I can do that. But then you have to think about, if you add all of those days up, 22 days, that's like 250 items, I think. In the end, it was <laughs> really tricky to find stuff to like, oh, what, what can I give away next? It's like. It was very, very, very motivating for me to do this challenge. And I did this challenge twice, actually, uh, before I left the city and moved to this cabin. So it was a perfect way to clean out the apartment and get rid of a lot of stuff I didn't want and needed to. And yeah, have a good time at the same time. So best of luck. Even though I love all this cleaning and sorting everything up, one thing I don't like to get rid of is my books. And I think that goes for both Christina and I. And we are both big fans of The Lord of the Rings. I love immersing myself into that universe. And that was actually one of the first books that got me into reading when I was a kid. <laughs> I remember that all my classmates got the book in three different copies, like The Fellowship of the Ring, The Two Towers, and The Return of the King, like in three separate books. But my mom bought me all those three books in one. So whenever I had to carry the book around with me, in my backpack, it was like <laughs> carrying around on a brick. Uh, very heavy, but I still loved it and still do to this day. And right now, thanks to the sponsor of this video, Audible, you can actually listen to The Lord of the Rings, The Fellowship of the Ring for free until the 13th of October by streaming it on your Alexa. Audible, they offer an incredible selection of audiobooks and podcasts across every genre. And I've used Audible way before they even started to sponsor my videos, and that's why it's so easy for me to recommend them to you. If you for some reason have missed it, there is a new series out called The Rings of Power over at Prime Video. And I've been waiting for this one for quite a while now. And the way I hyped myself up before the show went live 
was to re-listen to the audiobooks. So like really immerse myself and dive into the universe of Middle Earth. The way Audible works is that with a membership, you get one credit each month that you can use on any title in their entire library. And you also get to keep that one forever. You can start listening now with the 30 days Audible trial. And with that trial, you can choose one audiobook and you get full access to the entire Plus catalog. To check it out, just head over to audible.com slash Kalle Flodin or text Kalle Flodin in one word to 500 500. And new members can always try Audible out for a month for free just to check it out. So get ready for the rings of power over at Prime Video. And like I said, Alexa customers can listen to the Lord of the Rings Fellowship of the Ring audiobook on Alexa free until the 13th of October. Simply say Alexa, read the Fellowship of the Ring. So when you're ready to dive in and really immerse yourself into Middle Earth, Audible is the place to go. If you click the link right there, that will take you directly to Audible. And if you click one of these ones, you can continue watching more of my videos. Thank you for watching this one and I'll see you guys next Sunday. Bye for now.